Most people already have storage installed. So what actually occurs is when you get into a, like a virtualization project, the first thing people do is, oh, I need a high availability SAN. So the first thing you do is you throw out all the storage you got, you have to redesign, and you rip and replace everything you have, and you do a storage overhaul just to support this virtualization environment. So how do I save you money? Very simple. Don't rip and replace that existing storage. Use data core, virtualize it, and by the way, probably in the next building over, you might have a different vendor's brand of storage. Most of these storage arrays typically have a requirement for the same storage array on this location as the one at a remote location. From data core standpoint, we're device independent. We don't care. So it's a long way to say it, but by having the ability to have portable software, I mask the issue of whose uh, vendor brands it is. I get rid of the incompatibilities across vendor devices. And because of that, you really get a bigger cost savings. And what we have found, in fact, is we usually can insert data core software into accounts without a significant increase to the money and frankly at a much lower cost than it would have taken to do the overhaul of storage and the SAN that they would have originally anticipated. Let me go through each of those. Uh, it's interesting. Thin provisioning, um, while it's a great technology, uh, I've also never understood the idea that if all you are Provision, thin provisioning is the storage within your own box, you haven't really done the big job. The big job is I've got you know, HP arrays, EMC arrays, IBM arrays. If I can thin provision across all of those, I've got an efficiency across. So that's one of the advantages of portable software. When I get to things like deduplication, we've looked at it. And you know, the, the, the issue is there's a cost in terms of performance with doing the deduplication, but most of it is being done for the backup and the archival and those kind of applications. And frankly, when we look out there, there's a lot of people that have great products out there. And we fundamentally have, uh, you know, as they say, stick to your knitting. <laughs> we understand the storage problem very well, and that's what we've focused on. Uh, we, we see the ability to open our capabilities to integrate very well with all of these different deduplication capabilities and we're you know we're open to that but it's not something that we've done today we are looking at some things there that we will do in the future uh, non array tiering um, that one fundamentally from an economics I've never understood it either I've, I've seen this thing where Vendors tout the fact that they can go from their $20 per terabyte uh, <laughs> or $20 per gigabyte disk to their $5 per gigabyte disk uh, type of costs. And I think you're right. I mean, we do something that's called storage classes. And basically, if you want to have high speed storage or low speed storage and you want to have different priority levels, we will do that for you. But the idea that from our standpoint, we are device independent. So from our standpoint, we don't really care which devices you have in a class. It's up to you to define that class. And if you want to call it high speed, mid speed, and low speed, that's fine from us. And we can manage across that. I think a lot of this is um, artifacts of the historical costs of storage. I mean, people still have in their mind these uh, exorbitant costs for these, you know, the fiber channel disks that were X dollars and, and the SATA drives and, and USB sticks and stuff. From our standpoint, fundamentally, disks are disks and we don't really care. Now, there are reasons why you're going to have faster disks and you're going to use them for certain applications, et cetera. But, um, you know, we already do the caching that accelerates the performance. And frankly, if you, if you lay it out well, you know, you, you use what you need where you need it. Instead of having to have that big storage array to overkill all problems, it may be that only a very small segment really needs that high speed. So just use that 
and we will virtualize that and present that as the high speed storage to where you need it. And if you do need lower cost storage, that's fine as well and you can use that as you need. Well, from the terminology, I think the terms are still very cloudy and what I've seen actually is um, there's external uh, clouds and there are internal clouds and, you know, external clouds are what people think of as things like Amazon and stuff and actually one of our better customers, uh, Host.net, is actually selling a whole infrastructure. Uh, to companies based on data core, VMware, and Cisco. That combination of virtual servers and virtual disks fundamentally is a way to provide resources over a cloud and provide an infrastructure to companies. To me, that's a real business and something that, you know, while well, we're selling, we're making some money on it, and, uh, and I think it's good business, and I think that's a real viable um, opportunity for us. However, the bigger opportunity that we've seen out there is actually what I would call the internal clouds or private clouds. And in a lot of ways, the big driver of that has been the classic virtual servers. And typically, this is where people are using either the Microsoft Hyper-Vs or VMware. And they're really re-architecting their IT infrastructure within their own company. And the same problems exist there. How do I make it easier to provision servers and storage? And the combination of products like Microsoft Hyper-V and Data Core is just an easy way to do it. One of the problems I see right now is folks are also looking at how to, in effect, recreate silos <laughs> of offerings within the cloud. And what happens is then each cloud is going to be different, and we're going to be right back to the islands of isolation. And the whole idea of a cloud is to have services, I believe, that anybody can share and use. If you think about what Data Core does, we're portable software that removes the incompatibilities of different devices underneath. And as long as the hypervisors are doing the same kind of thing, that's really the basis of a cloud. So let's avoid getting into clouds that are all different and let's look for the commonality. And Data Core is one of the key ingredients in doing that. As long as you have a common denominator, which is fundamentally storage, that is the role that Data Core can do. So we become the Rosetta Stone across all of these different cloud platforms.